brain is working, that's good. All right, your eyes are working too. Well, you seem to be doing okay. Yes, God has been good to me. He even turns on the lights in the bathroom when I have to go. Oh, really? Tell, tell me more about that. Well, whenever I have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I open up the door and the light automatically comes on. And then when I shut the door, it goes off. God has been good to me. Interesting. Well, I hope your good fortune continues and thanks, well, thank for, you. thanks for coming in today. You're welcome. Hi, could you come in here for a second? I don't know why. Well, your husband seems to be in good health. I do have one question though. He said that God turns the light on for him whenever he has to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Do you know anything about this? Oh no, he's been telling you about that. He's been peeing in the refrigerator again. Hey guys, it's Brittany, one of your club leaders, and this week for Club Devo, we are going to be talking about an intimate moment with Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 41. So in this passage, Jesus had just crossed the barren and the unrecepted deserts of Samaria and is going to set, set his face towards Jerusalem. It is autumn and the, um, the leaves are collecting and little wind-blown drifts to wrestle to warn that winter is not far off. And it'll be the last winter for Jesus and Jesus knows that. So for him, winter is already here piercing his heart. He stops about two miles short of Jerusalem and comes across a village at that is named Bethany. And there he goes seeking shelter before he um, goes to Jerusalem. And two women that are sisters give that to him. The first sister to answer the door goes and welcome, welcomes Jesus with open arms. Her name's Martha. She's very excited to tend to all Jesus's needs and be the perfect hostess. So she goes to get dinner ready. The second sister comes down a little bit later and she also likes to cook, but she doesn't like to clean up her mess. But she is very perceptive and asks very few questions, but very thoughtful ones. Um, and is a really good listener. So Mary sits at Jesus' feet and she starts washing his feet while she's listening to Jesus. And Martha is making dinner for Jesus. And as she's doing this, she's getting a little upset because her sister isn't helping her. And she keeps, a she keeps asking herself, why is my sister not helping me? Why is she being lazy? So finally she had had enough and she storms into the living room where Jesus and Mary sat and she said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do work by myself? Tell her to help me. And Jesus answers um, Martha like this, Martha, Martha. Like the time he would weep over Jerusalem, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How often I have longed to gather your children together as hens gather her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. Or when he would prepare Peter for his fall, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked swift you as we. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. Or when he would confront Saul on the Damocras road, Saul, Saul, why do you prosecute me? So he's technically, he's technically saying, Martha, why are you worried and upset about so many different things? But there's only one thing that is needed, and Mary has chosen that, and that will not be taken away from her. And he continues with this. Fellowship with him is a matter of priorities, a matter of choice. It's the better part of the meal life has to offer. It is, in fact, the main course. So Jesus is saying... Martha, why are you so 
distracted about so many different things when there's only one thing that need is needed. And that's what Mary has chosen. Mary has chosen to sit and make Jesus her number one priority while Martha is distracted in the kitchen. So this happens a lot in life with a lot of people. They get distracted by a lot of different things, sin, social media, work, sports, and don't make Jesus their number one priority. And Jesus died on the cross for our sins for a reason. He wants us to come to him after we have sinned and ask for forgiveness and put our full faith in him so that he can help us in life and make sure that we are taken care of in life. And that's what a lot of people aren't doing. They're distracted. And a question that I want to ask you guys is, are you distracted by a bunch of other things and not making your number one priority Jesus and the kingdom of God? Are you, or are you making Jesus your number one priority? Thanks, guys. We will see you next week with another Club Tivo. What's up, wildlife? I'm here with Payne. We're going to do some Zumba painting. And we're going to have our paintbrushes. I mean, I mean, our hair. I mean, our paintbrushes here. And we're just going to keep going at it, all right? So we're going to do some high knees while we do this. All right, first, let's get some circles going. Some circles. Some circles. Oh, yeah, look at that. Some impressionist painting. So you can go in the circles. You want fine lines, OK? Fine lines. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, now we're going to go some X's. Some X's. Some X's. Some X's. Some X's. Some X's. All right, now we're in triangles. 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 All right, now we're just going to do some smiley faces because we got to brighten up our days, wildlife. Some smiley faces. And that's how you do Zumba with paint. painting with paint. It's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs>